everyone, Richard here. In this video, we'll take a look at Botticelli's The Birth of Venus. We'll follow that in the next video with Venus's sister painting, Primavera. Both are in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy. These are early Renaissance works, Primavera painted about 1477 to 1482, Venus a bit later, about 1485-86. And they're both quite large, Primavera almost 7 feet tall by 10.5 feet wide, Venus a bit smaller, about 6 by 9 feet. The stated size of the birth of Venus from the Uffizi Gallery website is 172.5 by 278.5 centimeters, which is almost exactly the proportions of a golden rectangle, the white outline here. But all the photos I've seen show a painting that is just a bit less elongated, including photos of it in its frame. A photo of the unframed work shows irregular edges, more so on the right and bottom. The top has a distinct line that seems to demarcate the top of the painting, possibly where the canvas was once folded over its stretcher, and the painting's left side is fairly well defined. But exactly where the right side and bottom originally were is not clear. I need to do more research on how the Uffizi established the painting's dimensions and why the framed painting does not appear to match the stated proportions. With the method that works so nicely with the previous paintings, I first placed an outline of a golden rectangle on the painting, fitting it to the published photos as best I could. I then tried to find some hint of geometry by first placing wide lines where I felt there might be underlying structure, first along the raised arm of Thalo, the Hora of Spring, on the right. A less clearly defined line, similar in angle, though reversed, can be placed over the wind gods Zephyr and Aura on the left, running through their bodies and down along their legs. Before going any further, I noted that these lines are nearly the same angle as the top side of a pentagon, so I placed one over the painting. With the sides of the pentagram nicely snuggled against the sides of Venus, I thought, okay, this could be something. But it's off-center. So the immediate question was, how might an artist devise such a geometry, choosing to place a pentagon exactly here in a golden rectangle? To try to find the answer to that question, at some point I extended the top left of the pentagon out to the left side of the painting. I then realized that this line might meet the edge about at the golden mean, so I added those. And sure enough, it fit perfectly. As does the horizon line at the top left, though isn't it odd the way the horizon dips in the middle. So the golden mean does connect the pentagon to the edge of the painting on the left anyway. But is that enough? I don't now recall what made me even think of this next step, but somehow I noticed that if I extended the left side of the pentagram until it met the bottom of the painting, it's the same length as the top left side of the pentagon extended to the side, like this. How very interesting. I then quickly figured out that if I extended the top right side of the pentagon, to the right edge, it's exactly the same length as the right side of the pentagram, like this. Remarkable. This painting has led me to a unique way to construct a golden rectangle, not one I've ever seen or heard of before. Interesting. And it doesn't stop there. If the right side of the pentagram is extended to the bottom of the rectangle, like so, a line drawn from that point to the upper right corner just touches the side of the circle. A friend, a retired geometry professor, has done the math and tells me that this can be mathematically proven. So regardless of how well this might fit Botticelli's painting, it's certainly an interesting bit of geometry. I wonder if artists in the Renaissance knew about this way of making a golden rectangle. Did Botticelli? And did he use this geometry to lay out the forms of this painting? I don't know the answer, but I am certainly intrigued by the thought. I've discovered several more unusual geometries similar to this that will come up in future videos. Stay with me for those. 
This geometry doesn't fit the painting to the same degree as the previous two. But the way Venus's upper body and arm fits inside the upper point of the pentagram appears significant, as well as the way the top right of the pentagon follows Thalo's raised arm and down along the folds of the drape. The figures of Zephyr and Aura on the left are less firmly attached to the geometry, but the tilt of the figures does follow the angle of the top left side of the pentagon, and they do nearly fill that upper left triangle. A remarkable bit of geometry, and like the previous two, reverse engineered from the painting. Having gotten this far with Venus, I was really keen to take a closer look at Primavera, to see if there might be a geometric connection between the two. I'll give you a hint. Yes. Not only that, but the geometry gets even more interesting. Come along with me to part five. For information on my own work, visit my website at rtdavis.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Richard Thomas Davis Artist. Thanks for joining me.